Is your bank kind of treating you like garbage? Poor customer service, low interest rates, and high fees? I hear it a lot, and it's where I was a few years ago. I didn't even think about getting a new bank until I started actually understanding personal finance. So today, I'm gonna help you out. We're gonna go over all of the major Canadian banks. I'm gonna tell you what you should actually be looking for, what today's banks are actually offering, and how to choose a bank that fits best with your life. Welcome to the Ready Set Life YouTube channel. My name is Brittany and I am a millennial financial coach who makes videos all about taking the fear out of finance. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoy this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos every single Thursday and you don't wanna miss them. So how did you choose your current bank? When did you get your bank account? If you're anything like me, you basically just banked where your parents did. They brought you in for your first account at 11 and you never really paid attention to any bank stats, like what fees they were charging or the type of accounts that they offered or the customer service that they provided. This can lead to some pretty big frustration. It did for me at least. I didn't even know that there were better options out there. I kind of just assumed that all banks were crap based on the stories that I heard from other people. That is until I actually started learning about banks. Before we get into the real meat, I'm gonna tell you about what banks actually are. That is what a bank is versus a credit union. Because sometimes this can get a little bit confused. They kind of seem like the same type of company since they're both places to keep your money, but the major difference between a bank and a credit union is that banks are for-profit companies. They're in it for the money. Whereas credit unions are non-profit. It doesn't matter to them if they make anything at all. Credit unions typically have lower fees and better customer service, but banks have lower interest rates on credit. Since they're big, they're able to take larger risks and offer you loans at lower rates or higher amounts. They can also offer more branches or ATM locations and better technology which in the era of mobile banking is increasingly more important. I'm not gonna spend too much time on the differences or advantages for each. If you want a better video explaining this, let me know in the comments down below. But I did just wanna mention what they were and that they were different, just in case you had that question. Today, we're going to assume that you've already made that decision between credit union and bank, and we'll just focus on banks. There are two major types of banking institutions. There are brick and mortar banks, i.e. banks that actually have a physical location, and there are internet only banks. Brick and mortar banks typically have higher fees but more offerings and the advantage of actually going in person to talk to someone about your banking needs. Internet only banks are well basically what they say they're on the internet. They don't have any physical locations which means they're able to offer lower fees and better incentives like joining offers or higher interest rates for savings accounts. I've decided to review both brick and mortar banks as well as internet only banks which will give you a broader idea of where you actually want to store your money. And we're just gonna be looking at the personal checkings and savings accounts today, not the additional offerings like loans or credit. You can actually store your money at a different place than you have these things. And I think there are too many factors to consider if you actually add those into the mix. Let's start with the brick and mortar banks. In Canada, we have what's called the big five. That is RBC, TD, Scotiabank, BMO, and CIBC. And as of posting this video, here is what they offer. RBC, or the Royal Bank of Canada, has four types of checking accounts. All of them have monthly fees, with the smallest fee being $4. And that includes about 12 transactions a month. They also have four types of savings accounts, all with no account fees and interest rates between 0.01 and 1%. TD, or Toronto Dominion Bank, has five types of checking accounts. And all of them have monthly fees, with the smallest fee being $3.95. That includes about 12 transactions a month. They also have three types of savings accounts with no account fees and interest rates between 0.05% to 0.5% or 1% if you can actually match a $10,000 minimum. Scotiabank or Bank of Nova Scotia has three types of checking accounts. All have monthly fees with the smallest fee being $3.95, which includes 12 transactions a month. They also have four types of savings accounts, all with no account fees and interest rates ranging from 0.5% to 1%. It's all starting to sound pretty familiar, isn't it? CIBC or or Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, has anybody ever called it by its full name? <laughs> has three checking accounts. Again, all with fees, with the smallest being $3.90, that includes 12 transactions a month. They also have four savings accounts, all with no monthly fee and interest rates ranging from 0.25% to 1%. BMO, or Bank of Montreal, is a little bit different. It has six checking accounts. Their lowest fee is $4, and that also includes 12 transactions a month. And they also have three types of savings accounts, 
with no account fees, but the interest rates are a little higher at 0.5% to 1.6%. But to get that 1.6%, you also have to increase your account every month by $200. All in all, these banks pretty much suck. I know it's just my opinion, but once we look into what the actual internet banks offer, you'll see what I mean. They just seem to gouge out everything that they can from you. All of them have monthly fees, all of them offer less than 1% interest rates on their savings accounts, and they limit monthly transactions. And of course, charge you if you go over that limit. Let's see what the internet banks offer instead. Internet only banks in Canada are Simply Financial. This used to be called PC Financial. It was a joint venture between CIBC and President's Choice, but now it's actually just a CIBC subsidiary. Tangerine, which was formerly ING Direct, Equitable Bank or EQ, and a new one, Modus Bank. And it was founded in October 2018 and it's owned by Meridian. Now you'll notice that I mentioned the word subsidiary or kind of owned by in that section. And that's because these companies are actually part of the larger banks. It's kind of like the relationship between the phone companies. Kudo is the budget version of TELUS and Fido is the budget version of Rogers. They use the same towers and signals, it's just a cheaper phone plan. And it's the same thing with these banks. A lot of the time they'll just use the same infrastructure. For example, if you bank with Tangerine, you can use Scotiabank ATM locations for free. Tangerine doesn't actually have any physical locations, except for maybe that one place in Toronto. So they have a partnership with their parent company, Scotiabank, so their customers can actually take out physical cash if they need to. There are a few exceptions to this, which are kind of interesting cases, but I'll get into that in a second. For now, let's just start with what Simply Financial offers. Simply Financial offers a checking and a savings account. That's right, no fancy multiple account tiers because they don't need them. They offer no monthly account fees for a minimum balance of nothing, unlimited transactions and withdrawals, and free Interact e-transfers. And because it's a CIBC subsidiary, you can actually take out cash for free from the CIBC ATM locations. Their checking account, yes, their checking account, has an interest rate that ranges from 0.5% to 0.15%, and their savings account interest rate is 1.15%. Tangerine. Again, Tangerine has one checking account and one savings account. Its checking account has no fees and unlimited transactions. And as I mentioned earlier, you can actually take cash out from all the Scotiabank ATMs. Their checking account has an interest rate of up to 0.65%, but basically it's 0.15% because no one is going over the $100,000 limit of earning 0.65%. Their savings account has an interest rate of 1.15% as well, unless you're a new customer and get the introductory offer of 2.75% interest for the first six months. Modus Bank. Modus Bank is pretty new on the scene. It opened in October of 2018 and is fairly on par with the other internet banks. This one is owned by Meridian and actually allows withdrawals from exchange ATMs. Again, it has a checking account with no fees at a 0.5% interest rate and its savings account interest is 2.25%. The next bank is EQ Bank or Equitable Bank. This one is super interesting because it's kind of the next level of internet banks. They just literally don't have anything physical. They don't even really have checking accounts because there's nothing really to do with them. They don't print checks for you. They don't have ATMs. They don't even give you a debit card. It's a little weird to think about, but really you could just keep all your savings in a digital only space. I can't remember the last time I wrote a check and I barely even use cash anymore. The advantage of keeping your savings over here is that this account has an interest rate of 2.3%. Yep, highest of all. They also, of course, don't have any other fees or charges on top of anything else they offer either. So knowing all this information, how do you choose your bank? You'll wanna make sure that you're minimizing any fees or charges that the bank has. For me, that cuts out any bank that charges account fees, transfer fees, or has a minimum balance and that basically takes brick and mortar banks kind of out of the running. You also wanna make sure that you have the best interest rates. And of the internet banks, EQ and Modus have the best interest rates. With Modus, it's so new that I don't quite know how to feel about this bank. It seems pretty legit. It's got CDIC backing, that's the Canadian Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is a pretty good indicator of its authenticity. I think it could be a really good choice when it grows older but it's less than a year old, so I kind of want to watch it a little bit more before I decide to actually switch to it. With EQ, we have that disadvantage of not being able to use cash or checks. While I never use these items, I don't know if that makes it a replacement for a full service bank. And that makes me a little wary of it being my sole bank provider. So that leaves Simply and Tangerine, both of which are pretty equally matched in terms of offerings and rates. 
I personally chose Tangerine, mostly because there was a killer sign up bonus when I was looking for a new bank. So definitely look into sign up bonuses for whatever bank that you choose. What bank do you bank with? And what's your opinion on total digital banks? Do you think the world will ever be ready to switch to that type of system? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And turn on your notification bell because next week I'm going into a deep dive on my personal accounts at Tangerine Bank and the details of its offerings as a whole. So if you're thinking of switching to Tangerine, you won't want to miss this one. Thanks for watching everyone and until next time, I'm wishing you great financial health. Bye! Go away! I didn't even make any noise! It's nerve-wracking not usually being watched!